What's intimidating? What's got you running from rather than running toward? But imagine you could. Imagine you could fight this fight. Do you have a fight worth fighting? Here's the thing. Every one of us start out wanting to soar, wanting to fly, driven by great ambition, right? And here's the thing. I want to share with you a quick clip from a, the movie Top Gun where you got two guys who are driven by ambition. Maverick and Goose, two fighter pilots, get pulled into the office by their superior and dressed down. I mean, they're getting reamed out and corrected because frankly, they were out hot rodding it in their jet. They get pulled in, but after he dresses them down, he gives them a dream, opportunity. He invites them to join the Top Gun program, an elite fighter pilot program, where they get to live the dream. They're gonna be living on base. They're gonna be training and becoming the most elite fighter pilots on the planet. It's a dream. It was my dream. Honestly, I wanted to be a fighter pilot, uh, maybe inspired by Top Gun. But here's the thing, every one of us set off with that kind of ambition, believing we can change the world, believing we can do something great. We're going to climb the ladder of success. We're going to achieve. We're going to live the dream. And then something goes wrong. It did in Maverick's life, a, a, a tragedy, an accident, and he blamed himself and he beat himself up for it. And, and it happens for every one of us. Along the way, we lose our way. And then we spend our life running from rather than toward. And you can either live frantic because of fear or focused on your fight. Either way, you're going to get drained. You're going to get exhausted. You're going to get worn out. But only one of them is worth it. Let me bring you to an ancient story, a historical moment set in the nation of Israel in the middle of a battle, or at least a, a battle scene. You're probably super familiar with the story of David and Goliath, but let me give you the background to that. You have the nation of Israel who perpetually is fighting this enemy, the Philistines. It's recorded in the Bible in the book of 1 Samuel. And many of these battles are recorded in the Bible, but this is another battle in the same valley with the same enemy. And here they are in this, in this valley, which is often referred to as the, the battle of or the field of blood because of how many battles have been fought there. And so here they are, uh, the Israelites on one side, the Philistines on the other, and they've been there now for over 40 days. And one soldier from the Philistines keeps taunting them. His name is Goliath. Let me, let me jump into the story and kind of just read this to you. 1 Samuel chapter 17, I'm going to start in verse 2. Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why do you come out and line up for battle? He's literally saying, what are you doing? Do you guys even want to fight? This day I defy the armies of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. You know, kind of this mano y mano. Let's just go man to man and whoever wins, that will determine the outcome of the battle. On hearing the Philistines' words, Saul and all of the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. Maybe that moment captures how you live and how you feel. You pick a fight and then you cower from the fight. You, you decide that this is an enemy worth fighting, but then the enemy intimidates you and taunts you. And so you back up in fear and you live frantic rather than focused on the fight. And there's Goliath taunting them throwing ridicule at them, mocking them and mocking their God. And he literally is saying, do you even want to fight? Give me a man. And he goes, you know, let's just do this. One of you comes out, I'll fight. And whoever wins, that's who wins the battle. But you have another moment, another warrior, not a seasoned warrior, not a giant warrior, but a boy. David, this young shepherd boy, the youngest son of, with seven older brothers, brothers who were at the fight, right? David shows up just bringing them food and he hears the taunts, he hears the ridicule, he sees the nation of Israel not willing to engage in the fight. They're running from rather than running toward and David just speaks up. David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You're only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. Saul speaks defeat over David. He discourages him. 
literally saying, you're not able. Maybe there is someone or something in your life saying, you're not able. Maybe it's in your own mind where you're telling yourself, I'm not able able. I can't face this fight. I I can't fight the fight that's in front of me. And so like the nation of Israel, you stand back, you, you cower from you, you lean away from the battle that's right in front of you. That was Maverick's moment in Top Gun, right? He lost his friend Goose in a, in a training exercise and he blamed himself. And so because he carried that guilt, it threw him off. It disoriented him. Here, let me share this clip with you. Maverick is up in the plane again. He's finally back in the cockpit and they're flying. He's with his squadron and he's going after the enemy plane. And, and as he's flying, he's got his uh, partners, other, his other pilots speaking encouragement into his ear and he's got his mentor officer encouraging him and coaching him, trying to direct him and literally saying, focus. All right, engage the target, fire, take the shot, right? And and, and he's having a hard time taking the shot because he's disoriented, because he's thrown off. And so his co-pilot is trying to challenge him, don't miss this opportunity, don't miss this moment. But he misses the moment and he makes excuses. Let me challenge you. I want to make sure that we don't miss our moment, that we don't disengage from the fight that's in front of us. How did David reply? But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off the sheep from the flock, I went after it and I struck it and rescued the sheep from its mouth. And when it turned on me, I seized it by the hair, struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. You know what David's response was? And you know what the principle that jumps off the pages of this moment And the principle that you really see even in the story in the movie is that you and I need to face our fight. We don't need to run from it. We need to run toward our fight. We all have giants in front of us. And we think the the takeaway of this story is not just to face our fight, but that you can face down your giants. You can take on your giants. There's big enemies in front of you and you can take them out, right? Well, the reality is that's impossible. Why is it impossible? Because it's not the giants that we face around us that are the problem. It's a giant that's in us. But the reality is that every one of us have a a spiritual giant living inside of us, not just sabotaging us, not just threatening or intimidating us, but literally destroying us, leaving us defeated. In the Bible, Jesus refers to that giant as sin. Sin is our desire to push away from God and go toward what we want to do, to rather than following the way of God, to follow our own way, and rather than uh, trusting God with our life, we trust our own instincts, and that enemy of sin gets planted in us, and it grows inside of us. It takes control of our life, and the end goal of that giant of sin is to steal the best from our life, to leave us killed, and then to destroy our life forever. So the end consequence of the giant of sin is forever judgment far from God. But here's what Jesus did. Not just for David, right? So a thousand years later, Jesus comes to face your fight and my fight. He faces down this giant of sin by becoming one of us, entering into our world, facing our fight. And when Jesus goes to the cross, what he's doing is he's taking on the blows, the stabs, the wounds that come from sin. And as he faces our fight, he dies in our place. Now you would think he was defeated, but believe it or not, his death defeated death. Because when he died, he died once for all. He absorbed the eternal judgment that we deserve. So in Jesus' death, there is victory, but Jesus not only died, he rose again from the dead, and in his resurrection, he conquers the grip of sin, the giant of sin in our life. He sets us free from the fear of death, and he liberates us from eternal judgment. So that anyone who believes in Jesus by faith, believes that Jesus faced your fight, And through faith, you get victory through Jesus Christ. 
You are forgiven of your sins. You no longer carry guilt and shame. And now you can receive this new life and this forever life because God's spirit comes and lives in your spirit. If that's where you're at today and you're ready to make that commitment, I wanna invite you, would you just say yes to Jesus right now where you're at? I wanna invite you to let us know. Respond by texting Jesus to 41411. This isn't just a text message, right? You're letting us know that you are saying yes through faith in Jesus Christ. You believe that Jesus faced your fight and now you're getting a new life through Jesus. Please let us know. Now, as you begin to live this new life, God's spirit is, in your spirit, something begins to happen. God emboldens you to begin to face your fight. In fact, let's just jump back in and let's let's hear how David responded in this moment. In verse 29, he goes like this, and David said, what have I done? Is there not a cause? And then David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. You know what David did? David found a fight. And you need to find your fight. Look, David was out tending sheep. He was taking out a bear. He was taking out a lion. He was, he was about what he needed to be about. And when his father sent him to the battle lines to help bring food and supplies to his brothers, he heard a giant defying his God and mocking his nation. And David found his fight. And he literally said, is there not a cause? For some of you, there's a moment where something on the news, something in your community, something in your family gets you angry. It makes your blood run hot. Your heart starts racing and you say, somebody needs to do something about this. That somebody is you. You found your fight. The reality is the moment you start thinking somebody needs to do something about it, you have found your fight. You discovered, is there not a cause? Is there not something worth living for and worth dying for? It's worth facing your fight. And now you've found your fight. For me, the way I would say it is this, not on my watch. What what is it in your life? What's around your life that you would not want to happen on your watch? Maybe you're sick of racism. Maybe you're sick of injustice. Maybe you're sick of the hate and the hurt. Look, we're celebrating 4th of July weekend. And right now our nation has been been a little bit beat down. Man, we went into 2020, we came charging in and then we feel like we got our, our legs kicked out from underneath us. We started with Kobe's death and then we got COVID-19, and then we've got racial tension coming out of a murder and injustice. And and it's easy when you get beat down to not get back up. But this is a moment, not just for our nation, but for you and I to find our fight and say, this is a fight worth facing. And I, I wanna challenge you. This is that moment where you don't need to go looking for a fight. The fight will find you. And it will find you right in your heart. When you look around and you start to feel upset or angry or discouraged about something. You just found your fight. What matters? What, what, it's not just that it could be done, it's that it should be done and it must be done now. And you need to get involved and you need to do something about that. Let me challenge you, not on our watch. Let's get involved, let's make something happen. You found your fight. Now let me, let me take it one step further. Some of you, you've been hiding from your fight. You've been running from a fight. I want to challenge you. You don't need a a new spouse. You don't need a new job. You don't need another family. You don't need to move somewhere else. You need to find your fight right in front of you and say, this is worth fighting for. My marriage is worth fighting for. My kids are worth fighting for. My neighborhood is worth fighting for. My community, my city, my nation. These are things that are worth fighting for, not against. You find your fight. Now let's jump back into the story. In 1 Samuel 17, starting in verse 43, and the Philistine cursed David by his gods. See that? He he doesn't just defy the armies. He's defying their God. Come here, he said, and I will give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. And David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. And all those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, 
for the battle is the Lord's and he will give all of you into our hands. Did you catch it? This giant comes out to mock their God. And David says, I want you to know that the battle belongs to the Lord. The fight you are facing belongs to the Lord. Now, here's the deal. Many of you are going to take this and you're going to think to yourself, you're going to find yourself in this story and you're going to say, well, I'm David and I'm going to slay my giants. And now you discover, no, you don't slay your giants. You and I are already defeated by the giant of sin. So we need Jesus to fight for us. We need Jesus to give us victory. He he gives us new life and forever life. And then he puts his spirit in us. And then he helps us find our fight. But when you find your fight, we have to recognize that the battle belongs to the Lord. Now, what many of us are going to interpret that as is this. My battle needs to become God's battle. I want him to fight the battles I'm facing. But that's not really what's going on in this story. David finds God's battle. David allows God's battle to become his battle. Some of you, you're asking God to fight a battle that's not a just battle. You're asking God to get involved in things and you're praying and asking God to give you a victory in some battles that are not right. They're not good. They're not best. They're not God's battle. You have to flip that and say, where is God fighting? What is on the heart of God? And I need need to make sure that what's on the heart of God is on my heart. And I need to make sure that whatever God's battle is becomes my battle. When you join the battle of God, God will give you the victory. God will go before you. He will fight in you. He will fight through you. And the victory you receive will be for the glory of God. And so the real question is, are you doing a battle that belongs to the Lord? And then when you get into that battle, are you making sure that you allow that battle to belong to the Lord? Or have you taken illegal possession of the battle? Are you illegally owning a battle that belongs to the Lord? They're not defying you. They're defying God. And if they're defying God, then you need to make sure the battle continues to belong to the Lord. So when you face a right fight, when you're fighting for your marriage, then the battle belongs to the Lord. When you're fighting for your children, not with your children, the battle belongs to the Lord. When you're fighting to do what's right, to walk with integrity and justice in the workplace. That battle belongs to the Lord and you're joining the battle. So make sure you're expending your energy on a battle that belongs to the Lord. Some of you, you need to allow this moment to stir in your heart and say, is there not a cause worth fighting for, a battle that belongs to the Lord? And so which means you've got to know the heart of God. What what breaks the heart of God? What makes God angry? God is for people. God loves people. And when people are hurt and injured, God's going to break, God's heart's going to break for them. And so does your heart break for people? Do you love your neighbor? Do you care for people that are hurting? Are you willing to serve those that are desperate and broken right now? Are you, to, are you willing to leverage your strength to defend the weak? Are you willing to leverage your generosity to give to those that are without right now, right? That's a battle that belongs to the Lord. And then one more piece right? You're going to get started. And I'm going to challenge you. Don't you wait. Don't you, don't you be like the rest of the nation of Israel, these armies that are looking out, listening for 40 days to this Philistine, mocking them, defying their God, right? At some point, you got to be like David. You got to say, is there not a cause? I'm going to go fight. And then you actually have to get out and fight. You got to pick up your armor or you got to pick up your weapon. And then you got to run toward the enemy. Interesting in the story, it says that David began to ran, run toward the giant. At some moment, you got to start. Can I encourage you? Start now. I mean, what better weekend than 4th of July weekend to begin to start this fight for what matters in a battle that belongs to the Lord. Don't wait. Don't put off till tomorrow what you can begin today. Let's start right now. And then when you get started, here's what's going to happen. You're going to take some blows. You're going to take some hits. Like Maverick, you're probably going to get discouraged. You're going to get knocked out of the fight. You're going to get beat down and you got to determine to get back up and fight on. Stay the course. Don't you quit. Don't quit now. You keep going because it's worth fighting for. Think about it. David goes out and he starts a fight. He finds his fight. Well, you could even say his fight found him. The battle belonged to the Lord and he goes out and he wins a great victory. 
and his victory inspired the nation of Israel to join the fight and it brought about a national victory. Is it possible that you facing your fight and you not giving up when you could have otherwise given up and you experiencing a small victory would inspire others to join in a fight worth facing and it would motivate them to fight on when they want to quit and what we may experience is the healing of a home the healing of a community healing of a city or even a nation maybe if you get back up and you keep fighting on others around you will be motivated and inspired to get back up and they will keep fighting on maybe together we inspire a nation to stand back on its feet and fight for what matters in a battle that belongs to the Lord Look, if it was worth starting the fight, then it's worth finishing the fight. So you determine to finish your fight. You stay the course and you don't quit in what matters most. What little things are you doing right now that if you kept doing them, they would become something great? Be faithful. Stay the course long enough to see the victory accomplished. And when you see the victory, who gets the credit? Is this about you? Is this about your battle? Is this just about your home or your family? No. David made it clear that he wanted the glory to go to the Lord. He said, so that everyone watching will know that it is not with sword or spear, but it is God who saves. The battle belongs to the Lord. What are you fighting for? That if you fight on and you win the day, the victory belongs to the Lord. I want you to know that God wants to fight for you because God is for you. He's for your home, for your family, for our neighborhood, our city, our nation. God loves you. And so I wanna invite you and encourage you. I hope that you feel inspired to not only fight on, but make sure your life points to the victory of God. He wants to bring victory in your life. And so I wanna take a moment, I just wanna pray over you. I wanna encourage you in prayer. And I'm hoping that you will take hold of this right now. And then I wanna invite you to join us as we respond. Heavenly Father, thank you that you love us so much, that you came for us. Jesus, that you came from heaven to earth to face our fight. When you found our fight with sin, with death, with eternal judgment, you didn't run and cower from that. You faced our fight, you took our blows, you, you took on our death and our eternal death sentence. You died in our place. And then when you rose, you gave us the promise of not only forgiveness, but the promise of eternal life. And so Jesus, we receive that, we live in that victory. And now God, you have put in front of us fights worth facing. We don't wanna run from, we, run, we wanna run toward. We're not gonna live frantic because of fear. We wanna live focused on our fight by faith. And so Lord, I pray that you'd stir our hearts right now in faith so that we will live by faith and we will not only face our fight, but God recognize the battle belongs to the Lord. And now, God, would you encourage us and give us courage to fight on in what matters most. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us on our online campus. Today, as always, we hope that so much more than just hearing one of our pastors deliver a message. We hope that today you actually heard the voice of God and that you felt and experienced His presence today. And so if today, is that very, very special day where for you, for the very first time in your life, you've said yes to Jesus, where today you've accepted and received the free gift of forgiveness and salvation and eternal life that Jesus has made possible for you, then we want you to know that today is a day that is worth absolutely celebrating and letting someone know. And so right now in this moment, you can actually interact with one of our online campus hosts. You can do so in the comment section or by clicking on the prayer tab. Additionally today, if you've been led by God to partner with LifeHouse financially so that we can continue to share the good news of Jesus with more and more people, then you can do so by clicking on the Give tab or by visiting lifehousechurch.org and clicking Give. Our theme for this year of 2020 is all things new. And so our prayer for you as you walk in, step into this new week, is that as you continue to walk with God and deepen your faith in Him, that more and more you would see God making all things new in your life. We'll see you soon.